Hi everyone, dear friends, my name is Terry Oldfield and I'm here in Australia in my studio. I'm really excited to see the launch of the new film and I've enjoyed working on this project very much. I first discovered the flute when I was traveling in the 70s in Greece and um, fell in love with the instrument. I had no idea at the time that it was going to become my life path and I'm very happy that it continues today and I used mainly the Bansuri flute on the, on the music for, for the movie. There's also an instrument called the monochord, which is an, uh, it's a modern instrument, but every string plays the same note. So it provides a wonderful background sound for improvising on the Bansuri flute. And my favorite flute is still my silver flute, which is the original instrument that I discovered in Greece. I enjoy that because it's got a kind of purity to it. Although the Bansuri flutes, bamboo flutes have a bit more expression. The possibilities on the bansuri are, are a bit more like the human voice. You can, you can bend the notes up and down and so you can express yourself a bit more clearly. But the silver flute still has that purity of tone that I still love. I used to listen to a lot of music but today I don't listen to much at all, actually. As a musician, I'm much more interested in, in playing music and keeping the mind clear. If I listen to too much music, I'm, I'm like a magnet for melody and it tends to get stuck in there and influence the way I play, the way I compose. So I prefer to be empty allow the flow of the universe to come through an emptiness rather than something which is already half full. I have a love affair with India. I first went there in 1971, spent a whole year traveling with a backpack, searching for something that I now know is already here. No more searching. I've arrived in this place, in this spot. I have a great gratitude for the ancient traditions of India. I still practice yoga. I don't do any meditation. I just do the yoga for to keep the body healthy. I've given up all practices. I'm here now in this present moment, available to be with whatever happens. I first started reading Carlos Castaneda's books in the in the late 60s, early 70s, and <clears throat> we owe him a, an enormous debt of gratitude for giving us a, putting a question on reality, because we tend to have this agreement that things are the, the way they are, and they are certainly not fixed like that, which I've discovered as I've gone on into later life, it's becoming clearer and clearer to me that we're in a deep hypnotic trance living in a holographic universe. And the flexibility of experiencing that is open to us if we are able to stop the world and go against the general agreement, which is how I live my life these days. Yes, stopping the internal dialogue is the key to everything, but can I just say that we cannot stop it. It stops when the understanding comes into play. Understanding is the key to stopping the internal dialogue. This is what I've discovered. The mind 
has to be satisfied in order to let go of the normal way of seeing things. It's the internal dialogue that keeps things fixed in the general agreement and that internal dialogue the stream of thinking will stop it will all fall away when the un when it understands it literally understands itself out of existence and peace the underlying peace is there it's always here yes i totally agree with the expression of the Nagual in, in Castaneda's books, Don Juan's term, the Nagual is that state of emptiness when this mind-body mechanism is allowed to be empty so the universe can flow through in its natural state. So this is a means is a vehicle of expression instead of a expressive kind of person. <clears throat> There's no person here. Let me just get my flute a second. This is the Bansuri flute that I used for my, most of the music on the series. Now, as an empty sensing mechanism, I can either play or I can allow the playing to come through. And the difference in expression is just immediately noticeable. And anyone that hears from that place of emptiness is immediately drawn into the absence of agreement which means that the internal dialogue which creates the world stops and becomes more flexible. Well the key to happiness is acceptance having things exactly the way they are, being available and trusting that in this present moment, everything is exactly as it's supposed to be. Imposing the will upon it, setting a direction, is like swimming upstream. And the key to happiness is surrender to this. This is it. I hope you all have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Namaste.